good, you're so good. Put your hands together. So good, you're so good to me. So good, you're so good to me. Oh, Lord, you're so good. You're so good, you're so good. Oh, yes, you so are. Good, so good, oh, you've got a reason to so praise good, you. So oh, good, Lord, we praise you. Oh, yes, you are. So good, you're so good to me. So good, you're so good. You're so good. So good, so good to me, so good, so good to me.
morning that this is the day that you have made. God, we choose to rejoice, God, and we choose to be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus, that your presence, God, is already in this place. God, we ask that your Holy Spirit continue to move, Jesus. I just want to invite the prayer teams forward this morning. If you would make your way. And uh, we uh, are inviting you to come forward and just let you know that these altars are open this morning. We believe that God did not bring you into this place by accident. And so we believe that you can have an encounter with him this morning if you choose to do so. And we also know that you've come into this place with needs and asking God for miracles and believing for things that sometimes it's hard to just believe on your own. So our family is here to lift you up and to pray with you this morning. We believe that Emmanuel, God with us, is here this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, God. The Lord is my shepherd. Whom shall I? The Lord is my anchor, and I am secure. The Lord is my refuge. Why should I run from Him? You keep me through death.
just sing that out this morning. You're always more. There is none like Jesus. Call on him this morning. You're always more. Oh, we believe you're always more. You're always more. Fill us up, fill us up. Always more. Yes, you are. you are always more. God, that you fill us up this morning. God, may that be our prayer, Jesus, God. God, when we are down, God, when we are in the valley, God, may we believe that you are always more, God, that you sustain us, God, as we abide in your presence. So this morning, God, we just ask, God, that you fill us up, God. Fill us up, oh, Jesus. We seek you, God. We seek your presence. Oh, how we love you. How we long for you. Here as we wait, seek your face. Come and make your throne upon our praise Here in this place Have your way The moment that we see you we are changed Show us your glory Show us your glory
Aren't you so thankful for that truth this morning, that in his presence, he has the power to change everything. God, we thank you, God, that victory is in your name this morning. Come on, let's just sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. You have won the victory. Thank you, Jesus.
the victory in our lives, God. Today we surrender our lives to you, God, and we say, Lord, in you we are victorious this morning. Father, we acknowledge you today, God, in our lives and in this house, Father. You have won the victory. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, God. We thank you that death cannot hold you down, God. Nothing can hold you down, Father. You are almighty, all-powerful, God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives today, God. And in you, God, we claim that victory, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why don't you take a moment to greet each other and say hi to your family and friends. Amen. church my name is Amy and my husband Dean and I are the pastors here and we're so glad that you're here this morning and we just want to welcome all of our first-time visitors our second-time visitors let's give them a hand let's welcome them this morning we are so glad you chose to be with us this morning and there is a card in the pocket seat back pocket in front of you that you can fill out or drop in the offering basket or you can take it to the back after service and we have a gift for you and we'd like to meet and connect with you today so we're just glad again that you've chose to be with us this morning we just welcome you today so let's get ready to turn our attention to the announcements this morning oh Hey, we're really glad you're here today. I am. I'm so happy. I'm doing my happy dance. Everybody do your happy dance. That's great. Our midweek family nights are in full swing. Last Wednesday was awesome. So this week again, Pastor Dean and Amy want to encourage everyone to come out and spend time preparing our hearts with prayer from 6 to 630. Then at 6.30 p.m., worship will begin. This week's Night of Empowerment features Pastor Joel Bennett. And as always, there's something for every age here on campus. So bring the kids, bring the teens, and come ready to learn and grow together. Have you already planned your Valentine's Day date night? Did you figure out your childcare yet? Well, on Friday, February 9th, Real Kids Live is hosting Parents' Night Out. You can drop your kids off anytime after 6.30 p.m. here at the church and then pick them up no later than 11.30 p.m. The cost is only $10 per child for the whole night. That's right, the whole night. If you have four or more kids, it's only $40 flat fee for the entire night. Please pre-register your child in the lobby for this sweet deal by Sunday, February 4th. Also parents, if you have a child that is in one of our real life kids programs, we invite you to a special parent informational meeting on Sunday, February 11th after each service. Come after you attend the nine or 11 o'clock service and it'll be a great time for you to meet our new children's director, Michelle Turner, and hear more about the awesome things that will be happening for families and kids at Real Life Church. Make sure you register online or in the lobby today. Attention all leaders! Bring your sack lunch on February 6th at noon and join us for our monthly leadership luncheon where we will have our very own Kwame Anku, a nationally renowned speaker and entrepreneur, joining us to share his leadership insights. You can find registration information on our website. We hope to see you there. 
Hey, so let me ask you, what do you guys fight about? Just tell me, what do you fight about? Money. What's crazy is one of the leading causes of divorce in America today. Money fights and money problems. How many of you have ever had a conflict with the person you're seated next to? You guys are planning your wedding, and it's like, oh, sweetie, listen, every good marriage starts on a Caribbean island with a little fruity drink. We all know it. Isn't it true we fight about anything and everything? Why do we fight with the person that we love the most? I want you to put yourself back in the driver's seat of your life and your money because I want you to learn to love your life, not theirs. That's all for today. Know that you can share your praise report or prayer request with us. You can also send us an email or text message by using the information you see on the screen. Find out more information by visiting our website at enjoyreallife.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Have a blessed week, Real Life. Well, good morning, church. Good, good. A lot of stuff getting ready to happen around here. We're really excited, and if you're a guest, Again, we want to welcome you. We actually have a really special guest uh, with us today because it's his first time in church. And so we wanted to welcome the son of Dam Damien and Elizabeth Gallegos. And where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? Over here. Can you guys stand up and lift baby Ob Obadiah up so that everybody could see? Oh, can there he is. There can we give them a hand and welcome him? So cute. And congratulations to you and your family. Thank you uh, for joining us. And uh, we are blessed. We're going to grow this church one way or another. And so uh, some, don't get nervous. All right. All right. Uh, and then again, I want to invite uh, you uh, to the Money in Marriage event on February 15th. Amy and I uh, are going to be going on that. And I just invite you to, uh, it's a date night again. Um, it's going to be an awesome night. And then also take advantage of the marriage community that Caleb and Latoya talked about uh, last week. That's at 9.30 a.m. on Sundays. I want to encourage you as we develop that community. But be a part of that, and uh, you will be blessed. Also want to mention that um, many of you may know, but some of you may not know, um, that Dee Dee's mom passed away uh, a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago. Her mom, Paula, who attended here regularly, and uh, she wanted to invite the Real Life Church family out to her life celebration uh, on Thursday at 2 o'clock at Trinity Life Center, which is just right uh, up the road off of Madison. And so would invite the church family out to that if you could be a support to her during this difficult time. She said she would appreciate the love. Um, also, a couple of testimonies. Um, how you know God is on the move? And so many of you have been praying for uh, the Yerk family, and uh, they just had a son as well. And baby Malachi came home yesterday for the first time in two weeks. So praise God for that. And then many of you were praying for uh, Steve McWilliams this past week, uh, who was in uh, ICU, and uh, he was actually in first service. Uh, so we give God praise for that as well. And then I want to just say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all those that came out to the One Days uh, group gathering yesterday. We had a great time uh, with Scott Boren and Pastor Andrew and all of our uh, group leaders that came out. We're look, really looking forward uh, to launching our groups here in a couple of weeks. I just want to say if you, ha you weren't able to make it out but you're still wanting to lead a group, you can actually register at the Info Center. We'll give you all the information uh, that you need to lead a group. But we're looking to launching at least 30 groups. We had 30 group leaders there yesterday, but at least 30 groups across the Sacramento region. And I'll be giving you more details about the campaign that we're getting ready to launch on February 11th. But would love for you to be a part of that. Uh, this Wednesday, we are having a lot of momentum released on Wednesday nights. And they just keep getting better and better and better. This Wednesday, uh, all the way from Sydney, Australia, will be Joel Bennett, who is an evangelist. He was the youth pastor there at that small church in Sydney, Australia, Hillsong. You might have heard of it. Uh, they're just influencing the world with their worship just a little bit. Uh, but he will actually be here on Wednesday night, and then he'll be ministering 
uh, to the church on Sunday as well. I would just encourage you with this. He is seeing thousands of teenagers come to Christ in the U.S. God has really put an anointing on him for salvation. And I just want to encourage you, if you have a family, a friend to, to bring, and maybe they've just been thinking about coming to church with you, next Sunday would be a great, great Sunday to do that as he comes. And so our uh, ushers are going to come this morning. And I just want to encourage uh, you as we take this morning's tithes and offering that if you are looking for your year in statement, how you know tax season is coming, right? Tax season is here. So you might have been wondering about your tax, sta- uh, your tax statement or your offering statements. They will be available uh, following service. There's a table out there. We have them all for you. Um, you can pick that up the next couple of weeks. They will be out there. Um, so please pick that up. And uh, we encourage you to do so. Again, thank you for your faithfulness, uh, 2017. And as we step into 2018, uh, I am just, uh, God never ceases to amaze me what he does through a people that are just willing to say yes. And we continue to see uh, this house sustained. And we continue to see our uh, giving stabilized. And so it's getting us into a real healthy place. One of the things that God spoke to me when I first became the lead pastor here is healthy finances in church. I just want to thank you for allowing us to get healthy as a church. Can we give God praise for that? Awesome. Awesome. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the faithfulness and the obedience of your people to partner with you in opening heaven, God, over real life, over our homes, over our businesses. God, we thank you, God, that you, for your promise that you said you would open the windows of heaven and, God, you would pour out such a blessing that we wouldn't be able to contain it. God, we thank you that we are experiencing that even now. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. If you're a guest, you can just drop your card as that basket goes by. If not, you can meet our team out in the back as you exit, and we'll have that gift for you. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to continue our series, uh, Empowered. And this morning, I want to talk to you about exercising excellence. Exercising excellence. Last week, we talked about the gift of power, and we discovered that there are nine gifts that God distributes to us and through us. How many are you thankful for the Holy Spirit? Come on, that saves us. Not only does He save us, He seals us. And not only does He seal us, He uses us. And so there is so much more. And so we talked about these nine gifts, and we broke them down into three categories to help us memorize them. And we said that there were three gifts that say something, there are three gifts that do something, and there are three gifts, I said say something, three gifts that do something, I just went blank. What is it? Reveal something. Thank you so much. I just know, I got it right the first service, but the second service I just went blank. I just noticed I wrote down say something twice. All right. Wow. Wow. Anyway, three gifts that say something, do something, and reveal something or know something. You see, it's God's heart that we would be in the know when it comes to spiritual gifts, that we would understand what's available to us, because when we do, and when we allow them to flow through our lives, how many know the church benefits? Paul said, about 10 of you said, amen, all right. How many know the church can benefit? The church can be built up and blessed by people functioning and operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So Paul said, listen, I don't want you to be uninformed. Another translation says, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts because it profits everyone. And so the question that I have for you today is this. How do we exercise the gifts most effectively to others how do we exercise the gifts with excellence and how do we avoid abuse of the gifts and how do we avoid extremes paul said there's a better way to operate in the holy spirit today and that's what we're going to look at in first corinthians 12 27 to 31 he addresses these questions he says 
Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And I put in parentheses, all together but unique. How are you thankful that you are unique in Christ? Verse 28, and God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, variety of tongues. Are, and he asks these questions, rhetorical questions here. He says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? And then he goes on to say in verse 30, do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Verse 31, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Everybody say best gifts. And why? And yet I show you a more excellent way. Go to verse uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, because how many know there wasn't chapters in the original manuscripts? So Paul says there's a more excellent way, and a lot of times we think the chapter ends there, but it actually continues and it goes on. He says, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. Turn the page. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me Nothing, And then you got to keep going to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. You see, Paul here in 1 Corinthians 12, he wraps it up by saying, Paul, by saying, by listing all of these rhetorical questions that the reader of the letter would know the obvious answer is no. Everybody say no. You see, God's desire for our church, for the church, is that we would express Him in a variety of ways through our church's diversity. Like I said last week, in the spirit of unity. Why? To build up a healthy spiritual community of believers. Let me say it again. God's desire is to express himself in a variety of ways through a church's diversity in the spirit of unity to build up a healthy spiritual community of believers. How many of you want to be healthy? You see, if we all bring the same gift to the table, if we want to all be apostles or we all want to be teachers or we all want to be operate in this gift, how many know that's kind of a plain vanilla church? Right? But it's in our variety, in the spirit of unity. In other words, we're all on the same page. Listen, that the power of God is released in greater measure. So listen, I'm not asking you to be like me. I'm asking you to be like you. You know, it's if we all bring the same gift and operate in the same gift when we gather as a church, how can we become healthy? It's like the guy at the gym that just focuses on his upper body but ignores his lower body. We've all seen this guy in the gym, right? I mean, he's yoked, but you look below his waist, and man, he's ignoring his legs. And we have believers like that in the church. Listen, they're exercising one part of their body, and it's like, man, you've got to pay attention to your legs. You see, we want to be a church that allows a variety of spiritual gifts to be exercised. Why? So that what is expressed is a reflection of all that Jesus is and all that he has to offer us. Therefore, Paul instructs us not to seek a particular gift, but the best gift for the moment or the situation we find ourselves in. In verse 31, and I'll just say 31a, the apostle says this, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Well, what gifts are the best gifts? Well, this is what I want to encourage you with. The best gifts are the gifts that are needed in that moment. The best gifts, the most valuable gifts, are the gifts that are most serviceable to others. Not the gift that you prefer. Not the gift that you want to give, but the gift the Holy Spirit chooses to distribute in the moment 
for the person you are ministering to or the gift that is needed in the situation or circumstance you find yourself in. How many know that's the best gift? How many know if somebody needs encouragement, right? They probably need the gift of prophecy release. They don't need the gift of tongue, right? They need to be built up. The best gifts, the most valuable gifts, are the gifts that are most serviceable to others. It was the end of my senior year, and like I told you, I believe it was last week, you know, I got saved, radically saved. My friend and I, we've seen a ton of our friends coming to Christ, and it was towards our end of our senior year, my friend Ron Nelson uh, was turning 18, and so he had an 18, uh, 18th birthday party celebration, and uh, we were really, you know, everyone was really excited, you know, his first guy to probably turn 18, and and whatnot, and so I was kind of wondering again. I was really zealous for the Lord, you know. I had a whole lot of zeal, but not a lot of knowledge. You ever been there before, right? And so I was asking the Lord, you know, you know, God, you know, what do you want me to get, Ron? And I'm not telling you the Lord spoke to me or anything, but you know, I ended up getting him a Bible, and I wrapped it all up and I brought it to the party, and it was an interesting thing because have you ever? purchased a gift for someone and you totally missed it this was that moment and so ron is opening gifts and you know again we're my friends aren't saved i just got a passion to reach and i'm i probably got visions of him opening that gift and me presenting the gospel and them all coming around me and leading them to jesus i'm just saying that's probably where i was at at the moment and you know, Ron opens up the first gift and it's this cool shirt and pair of shoes and all these different things. He gets some lotto tickets. Again, we weren't say lotto tickets. And, you know, and, and somehow, some way, my gift ended up being the last one he was going to open. And at that moment, I realized what I had done. And so when I... When he began to peel open the paper and he began to peel and he, he looked at it and everybody was kind of like on the edge, what'd you get? And Ron lifted up, he's all, a holy Bible. And he kind of tossed it over to the side and everybody went, oh. it was one of these want want moments. <laughs> I mean, the life was sucked out of the room. The celebration went out the door. You see, I didn't give Ron a gift. I was trying to force something I thought he should have. And though my motives may have been pure as a new believer, there probably was a better way to give him a Bible and give him a more appropriate gift for the moment. You see, when it came to spiritual gifts, Paul was saying the same thing to the church of Corinth. In verse 31b, he goes on to say, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. You see, the Corinthians were getting all caught up in the use of the gift. And Paul's saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm going to show you a more excellent way. We learned a couple of weeks ago that Aquila and Priscilla pulled Apollos aside to teach them a more accurate way. And now, and you know that Apollos went to Corinth, and here comes Paul again with the letter. And now he's saying, I'm going to teach you a more excellent way. How do you know you can always get better? You see, Paul says, earnestly desire the best gifts, but let me show you the most excellent way to experience the gifts. And that's why you have to go to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 3. Let's read it. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a claiming symbol. How many of you have met a believer like this? Right? They're more interested than impressing you with the gift than God's love that should be motivating that gift. <laughs> Paul says, listen, when you function and operate in the gifts without love, you're just a gong. He goes on to say, and though you have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, 
He says, if you don't have love, how many of you know that'll get on your nerves? That'll get on your nerves. And then he says, he, he breaks it down to even more practical. He says, hey, never mind the spiritual gifts that you all are concerned about. He goes on to say in verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, I mean, you know, that's pretty crazy, right? And though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me. You see, the most excellent way to operate in the gifts is to exercise them in Christ's love. You see, without love, people don't receive the gifts with the grace God intended them to be distributed with. In fact, a lot of people refer to the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 as the grace gifts. You see, God doesn't want you to be impressed with the gift. He wants you to be impacted by the love behind the gift. And so what Paul is saying, he's saying, listen, he's like, you can move mountains, great. He said, but listen, how many of you guys know people that can move mountains, but they mow over people? Right? You've got leaders, right, that they're, they're all about that. But yet, there is no love. Without love, people don't receive the gifts with the grace God intended them to be distributed with. And that transcends anything we do, but especially spiritual gifts. And this is what I want you to get. If you hear nothing else from me today, as your pastor, I want you to write this down. If the Holy Spirit is the distributor of the gifts, the love of God must be the motivator of the gifts. The word that Paul uses for love is a word that changed my life when I was 18 years old and I went into, or 19 years old, and I went into a two-year two discipleship school and I learned the definition of agape was this, that it is a love that chooses for the highest good of the object of your love. Choosing, love is choosing for the highest good of the object of your desire. Therefore, because love is motivating the gifts, I'm not exercising my gift to impress you. I'm not exercising my gift so that you know that I'm super spiritual. I'm exercising what God's distributed to me through the Holy Spirit from a place motivated by the love God has, not for me, but for you. Why? Because God doesn't want you to get my best. He wants you to get His best. You see, it's my desire as your pastor Maybe you don't call this your church yet, but it's my desire that a people would experience the gift of God in you, not the gong of a gift empty of love. Isn't there enough of that today, right? <laughs> Imagine the nine spiritual gifts, all three of them. The, the gifts that say something, do something, and know something, and reveal something. Imagine all of those nine gifts wrapped in patience, wrapped in kindness, wrapped in humility, wrapped in gentleness. The spiritual gifts wrapped in kindness, humility, and gentleness would actually be presented in such a way, if they were presented like that, they would actually be pre presented in such a way that was irresistible instead of making people irritable. You see, we have so many Pentecostal and charismatic folks, and I'm one of them, but listen, we have so many Pentecostal and charismatic spoke, folks that are irritable when it comes to the topic of spiritual gifts because of past experiences or things they hear that aren't true. Hello. So they hear these things, so they've just settled on being grumpy about the gifts they believe in but never operate in. How many know we can't stay there? We, listen, you can't allow weirdness or extremes, listen, to prevent you from walking in the miracle dimension and the fullness that the Holy Spirit has to offer His church. So listen, I want to offer an apology, and this is very sincere. 
If you've ever experienced the gifts in an abrasive, insensitive way, I want to apologize to you on behalf of the person that was more interested in the gift rather than the grace and the love that should have been behind it. You see, when you experience spiritual gifts, they should inspire you in such a way that it causes you and others to believe all things, as Scripture says, hope all things, and endure all things. You should never walk away from a spiritual gift, and if you do, you should probably submit it to somebody, but you should never walk away with somebody that says, I've got a word for you, or whatever gift it may be. You should never walk away from that moment wondering if that was God or not. Hello? I was on staff at New Life Community Church in Fair Oaks. Pastor uh, Mark Tucker uh, hired me as a communications director. Wasn't even a, 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 he didn't even bring me on as a pastor. He just graciously offered me a position. And um, we, I noticed when I, I got to the church, which was an Assemblies of God church, Pentecostal, you know, believes in the spirit, believes in the power of God. Pastor Mark himself did. And uh, I noticed, however, that we didn't lean into the things of God, but we kind of shrank back when it came to the spiritual gifts or the move of the spirit. Have you ever kind of know you guys know what I'm talking about? And so um, I noticed that and was just kind of curious about it. But then over time, I noticed that people that did operate in the gifts, um, like if they had a word or, you know, these different kinds of things, I noticed that in staff, um, we would, and I'm going to just put myself in there, but they, our, our staff would begin to almost ridicule and kind of be a little bit sarcastic about the operation of the gifts. And as I was there longer at New Life, I was promoted to executive pastor. And so um, I just got in a place where one day I just had, I said, hey, why are we afraid of this? Why are we shrinking back from this? And... <clears throat> They went on to say, and I, and I discovered this out of some conversation, they went on to say, as they said, years ago, <clears throat> we got a call. <clears throat> now, you know, that's already not starting off right, right? <laughs> they got a call, and someone from the church said, hey, I, I got a friend that's coming through. He'd, he'd love to minister there. And at that time, they did services on Sunday night. And they came, and when this minister came, it was evidently all about him. And they said it was a circus they said it was a nightmare. And after that guy, after that minister left, he said that night, we just said never again, never again. And, 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 and unintentionally, they said, we don't want that. And the pendulum swung all the way over here where they believed it, but never operated in it. And so what I began to do, I said, Pastor Mark, will you give me permission to invite ministers who are mature in the gift and can cultivate healthy spirit, uh, operation of healthy spiritual gifts in the body? And he said, yes, let's do that. And so, you know, over time, and this took a few years, we launched a revive conference and, and different things. And over the year, man, uh, you know, the. God began to stir his people up, and we started leaning in and leaning in and leaning in. In fact, a few months ago, uh, Sister Sharon from this church, she came to me and she said, hey, do you know anything about that New Life Community Church? And I said, yeah, I was on staff there for eight years. She said, what? She said, oh, oh man, oh, she said, they come to the altars during worship. They're hungry for God. They're leaning, in th leaning into the Holy Spirit. Why? That's God's desire for us. Why? Because now they're operating in health and safety, and they're stewarding the gift instead of shrinking back from it. Paul assures the Corinthians that love is the most excellent way when exercising the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In verses 4 through 7, he says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked. It thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. And look at verse 7. This is what I believe is the result of every spiritual gift. Listen, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Why? Because the gifts, listen, the gifts, when they're in healthy operation, they begin to flow in love, hope, and faith, or faith, hope, and love. 
Now jump down to verse 13 in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, now abide. Everybody say abide. abide. A lot of times we overlook that. It says, now abide. Abide. Now, he, again, it's in, it's in relation and in connection to his discussion and teaching about spiritual gifts. He's saying, now, listen, if you want that more excellent way, if you want to exercise the spiritual gifts with excellence, he says, abide in faith, hope, and love. What's that word abide mean? It means to remain. He says, don't let that gift, come on, depart from faith, hope, and love. He says, don't let depart it. He says, the word abide means to continue to be present. So wherever a gift is, listen, faith should be. Yeah. Hope should be. Yeah. And people should experience the love of Jesus Christ. He says, that gift is held together and kept by faith, hope, and love. And Paul answers the questions I proposed at the very beginning. How do we exercise the gifts most effectively, effectively? How do we exercise the gifts with excellence? How do we avoid abuse of the gifts? How do we avoid the extremes? And is there a better way to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit today? And Paul gives us the answer. He says spiritual gifts must abide, remain, not depart, be held to, kept, and remain one with faith, hope, and love. And that's exactly what happened here. On Wednesday night, we had Deborah Giles, who is Francis Anifuso's daughter, and she, um, God gave her words for several people in our congregation. I'm just going to tell you, this room was filled with faith. And as people got words, listen, you could feel the hope in this room. And my brother Wendell right here, brother Wendell got a word from Deborah, and I'm just going to tell you, the love of God was melting this Man of God right here. You could sense it and everybody was looking at each other and they were doing like this. Mm -hmm, oh yeah, that's right. Uh huh. Why? Because she brought a maturity. She brought, wait, so listen, if I have a word for you, I'm not just giving you a gift. I'm giving you faith, hope, and love that comes with the gift. Right? And listen, if I've got a discerning a spirit, right, I'm giving discerning spirits with faith, hope, and love. Not to freak you out, but listen, to give you a breakthrough, to give you hope, to give you love. And listen, God wants us to learn as a church how to offer the gifts of the Spirit, not to impress you, but to impact people with. And there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference. Spiritual gifts should always be adorned with God-sized faith, come with great hope, and given with much love. Paul is saying when you exercise or encounter a spiritual gift, it should bring a release of faith, hope, and love into your life. You can't separate them. Listen, you can't separate the gift from the motives. Paul is saying when you exercise and counter a spiritual gift, it should bring that release. Everybody say release. So what should be the result of exer the exercising of spiritual gifts with excellence? Listen, faith should be in the room. An unshakable confidence in the character of God should be imparted. Hope should invade the room. There is a joyful, confident expectation of the future that something good is going to happen for my brother or my sister. Love should permeate the atmosphere and penetrate hearts. God's unconditional love will be evident because why? God's best is being released in the room to that person. And this is exactly what happened on Wednesday night. I remember when I was doing this at at New Life, and people that have maybe uh, experienced extremes, and I'm just going to stop right here and just say this. Listen, if you want access, you're going to have to swim through excess. Okay, so I'm not going to say it's a perfect environment. Okay, but if we all have this as a foundation of operating, how many know we can create a safe and healthy place for spiritual gifts to operate in, right? And so when I was at New Life, I remember we had Havilah, we had Havilah Cunnington come, 
And Pastor Mark was kind of used to the kind of the, the weirdness and the extremes of that. And I remember we were on the front row, and I am serious. He knew a lot of, he'd been the pastor there for 20 plus years, so he knew folks. And he knew that God was using Havila to read people's mail. And he leans forward, and he says, Pastor Dean, he said, I have never experienced this in all my life. He said, this is absolutely incredible and exactly what we needed. How do you know we need more faith? How do you know we need more hope? How do we know we need more love today? That's why I bring in people that possess a mature gifting grounded in love, not folks who have a ministry built on a gift. And so I can guarantee you this, any person that stands behind this pulpit is going to have the right motives. We got to release health. And how you know we need healthy people behind the pulpit? You might be saying, Pastor, can't we just major in love and forget about the spiritual gifts? Wouldn't that just be easier, right? And that's kind of where things are trending in the church, especially Pentecostal and charismatic movements. Pastor, can we just kind of, you know, leave that to those guys over there, those people over there? And, you know, let's just kind of distance ourselves and let's just love people really well, and I just say to you, why settle for less than what Jesus Christ has died for? And he says this, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he says, he says, you can't ask that question. He says, pursue love. The word pursue means run after it. Run after it. How do you know we need to run after love? And he says, as you're running, he says, desire spiritual gifts. And so he says, run after it. And that word desire means burn with zeal for spiritual gifts. So he says, run after love. And at the same time, burn with a zeal for the Holy Spirit to flow through your life. And he says, but especially, I pray that you would prophesy. Why? Because when you prophesy, you will build my church. You will encourage my people. You will strengthen my people. You will release faith for my people, give hope to my people, and manifest the love of Jesus to my people. As Spencer comes today, I think Spencer's still here. There he is. There's my brother. Thank you so much. Will you stand with me? And we're not done yet, but we've got something to do at the end of service here. But will you just lift your hands to the Lord? And I want you to ask God to stir you up. To stir you up. That you would be motivated by his love, that you would be motivated by faith, that you would be motivated by hope, that you would see a fresh release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life. Listen, not to impress folks, but to impact them for Jesus Christ. Will you just lift your hands and just tell the Lord, will you use me, God? Will you use me? Lord, I've been hurt. I've I've experienced some weirdness. I've experienced some extremes. And God, I've kind of shied away from all that you had for me. But today, God, I'm standing and I'm just lifting my hands to you. And I'm giving all my past experiences to you. I'm giving what other people said about the gifts to you. And I'm asking God for a fresh outpouring in my life. Stir up the gift of God. As Paul told Timothy, Lord, I ask you to stir it up, oh God. I pray that the flame that is burning in my heart, God, would fan into flame. It would fan into fullness, oh God. God, that you would activate me. God, that I would be sensitive enough to know that you're wanting to use me to build up your people, to strengthen your people, to release hope to your people. God, will you use me? Will you just put your hand over your heart now and just say, God, will you use me? God, will you use me? Just, you talk to him. Just say, God, will you use me? Will you use me? I want to do one more thing with every head bowed and every eye closed. And maybe you're here this morning, you've never heard about spiritual gifts. Maybe you just came because you needed hope. You needed to experience the love of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're facing some kind of impossibility or some kind of addiction you can't 
you can't shake, but I want to tell you this morning that Jesus has showed up to break every chain in your life. And with every head bowed and with every eye closed this morning, if you need faith, if you need Jesus to come and invade your life, would you just lift up your hand? I want to pray for you. Is there anybody in this room? Yes, 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 yes. Hands all over. Yes, yes, in the back. Yes, yes, yes. Hands all over the room. Listen, God is going to bring a harvest. Listen, lift your hand. If you came here and you need Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and your Savior, you said, I've tried everything, I've ran long enough, and now it's time to run towards Jesus. Just leave your hand. Lift it for just a moment. Yes, thank you, Lord. Leave your hand up. Believers, if you see a hand that's lifted next to you, I want you to put a hand on that person, and we're going to pray together. Let's repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, let's pray all together. Dear Lord Jesus, I've come today on empty. I don't have any answers. But I've come today knowing that you are the way, the truth, the life. You are everything I need. I thank you this morning for forgiving me of my sin, for dying on the cross that I could have a new beginning, a fresh start, a new day. I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, amen. Can we give the God praise for that? Listen, I'm almost done, I promise. But if you prayed that prayer, we'd love to know about it. Come and see me, myself. Pastor Jesse's here. You can talk to somebody at the guest center on your way out. We'd love to know about that decision. Get a Bible in your hand. Whatever we could do to help you start in your new walk. But I'm telling you, God is shifting something in this place, church. And I want to just take a moment uh, to this last part of the service. You may be seated. I promise not to keep you too long. But I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Andrew and Camille. And I want the entire family, mom and dad, will you guys come up as well? Barbara Mills brother and parents, you guys all come up. And as you know, as a couple of weeks ago, uh, babe, come on up. Staff, y'all come. Uh, I got emotional first service, and uh, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, when I became lead pastor here, uh, Andrew uh, had been a longtime friend, and uh, he allowed me to write on his blog and pretend I was a big shot, but. Uh, you know, I was really looking forward to uh, working with him. And man, when I came in here, uh, we pulled off some miracles together. And uh, when I said, hey, man, we got to get this small group curriculum out. And he says, do you realize it's two weeks? I said, I know, I know, I'm sorry. And man, he did it. And that's when we did the This Is Real Life. And he's been such a pillar uh, for me. And as I, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, before we get to this point, uh, before there's announcement at the pulpit, there's a lot of conversation and prayer and openness and transparency. That's how I was taught. And so that's what I do uh, with my staff. And so um, it's, it's with a hurting heart today um, that we release and send our friend, but it is with excitement because I know that this is a promotion for him and Camille. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being, this guy is really a man with no guile. And, uh, man, he's no nonsense, and he loves the Lord. And, uh, man, I just want to say thank you for being, first of all, a friend, but faithful as a pastor and making sure it's done. He actually, we pulled off, uh, he did a one-day groups gathering for him. I said, could you do one last thing? And uh, we had we had over 60 leaders show up there at the Artisan, and uh, it was just an incredible, incredible time as he kind of handed the baton uh, as he goes. And so I just want to say thank you uh, for both you and Camille faithfulness uh, to this house, but I wanted you to give an opportunity to share. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Dean. Uh, this is going to be a little better. You messed me up first service. You almost had me crying. I wasn't ready for that. Um, uh, thank you, Pastor Dean and Amy. It's been uh, an honor to serve with you guys for the past few months. Thank you for your friendship over the years. And anything we would want to express uh, to the church, to our staff and our team um, would be summed up in the words thank you. Um, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your lives, be a part of this church. Uh, 
a part of this, this spiritual family. We've opened up our home to you uh, over the last three years. Uh, we had our second child while we were here, uh, Levi, at, at Real Life Church, and, and uh, we're just a young family, just like many of you. And uh, just to do life with you guys, it's been an honor. And to be a pastor here, be pastors here, and lead here, it's an honor. And so uh, we just thank you for the opportunity um, that we've had here, and, and we're excited about where we're going, but we're sad to leave. Uh, you know, as a church, we're family, uh, and yet we came here on kingdom assignment, and <laughs> the Lord is funny. Uh, he's, he's hard to track and predict, and, and we leave on kingdom assignment, and that's just, just the way of the Lord sometimes. Um, but again, all caps, thank you. Thank you. your gentleness and your kindness has meant to us but I remember Amy when we were sitting up here and we were doing the women's um, community event you said I'm not here to impress I'm here to identify with you I'm not here to impress anybody that's you you know you are who you are and I love that you love to identify with us and that's real leadership so thank you and to all of the family we just love all of you and it's hard to leave just like my husband said it's very hard to leave. You've been wonderful. We've seen God's goodness. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for opening up your hearts to us. We will always have um, a place for you and ours. So love you guys. Uh, again, this is a promotion and this is what we do. We don't sneak people out the back door. We rejoice in how God is opening the door and blessing you. Andrew, Pastor Andrew and I have talked a lot about this, but you are about to step into your destiny. A lot of the desires that are in your heart are about to be fulfilled. So we expect to see books, and uh, I hope you let me write at least a little bit of a recommendation in or something. Don't forget about your friends, all right? And uh, Camille, I just wanted to say the same thing about you, that there is a purity. I said this first service, but I want to declare it in the entire. There is a purity about you that is going with this promotion. And not only will you get promoted, but it's going to build a platform for you. And I see young women gathering, not just in small groups, but actually God is going to give you a voice, I believe, in Minnesota and Emmanuel. So I just want to encourage you guys with that as we go. And I'm going to ask you to stand now, stretch your hand forward. And uh, at the end, after the prayer is done, as we always do, there's going to be a basket on my left and my right and at the door if you can't say goodbye. But they're going to stand here. And if you would bless them monetarily before they leave, we want to send them blessed. Amen. And so if there's just a, you know, a monetary way that you can appreciate them, that's appreciated. If you just want to give them a hug around the neck, that's awesome too. But please, please take time uh, to, to love on them as we send them out in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Jesse. Father, we just, we love you, God. And we, as Andrew said, we thank you, God, for sending us gifts, Lord. We thank you for sending us people that mean so much to us. We thank you that you have uh, sent us, Andrew Camille, as people who love you, who care for this church, that have done it well, God. And we just want to honor you. And um, we just ask that you would send Camille and Andrew out yes. filled with the Holy Spirit, God, full of anointing, Lord. I just pray, God, that as they go to Minnesota in the very cold cold weather. God, that you would keep them warm of heart, God. Yes. That you would fill them with power and passion, God. I pray that as they um, set foot on their new ground, that it would be anointed. God, it would be full of grace. I pray over their new house, wherever it may be. God, that it would be full of your spirit, Lord, that their neighborhood would be affected for you, God. I ask that you would give Andrew favor in whatever he does, whatever he puts his hand to, God. Whether it be books or curriculum or a new small group series, God, I pray that it would just be so anointed and full of your spirit, Lord. I pray for Camille as you begin to do new things, God. We don't even know what's there for her, God, but I know it's something new and unique. And I just ask that you would give her vision, Lord, that you would fill her full of something um, exciting and that's going to fulfill everything that she's ever wanted to yes. do, God. I just ask that you would... Um, uh, 
cover their family with blessing and other family as they go to new territory, as they leave grandparents, Lord. I just ask that they, you would give them other grandparents, God. You can't fill the shoes totally, but Lord, we know that you can provide family that's um, not blood, but like family. So I just pray for Levi and Kyler that they would miss nothing, but be totally surrounded by people that love you and love them, God. We just love you, God, and I just pray, and I thank you again for just the blessing that Camille and Andrew have been in my life and my family's life. I'm so thankful, God, that you sent them to us. And, Lord, we just pray that you would give them the same blessing. We ask that you send them, Lord. We honor you. We love you, God. Thank you for all these things. Amen. 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 Can we just uh, say thank you one last time? And with that, in light of Minnesota, we say, Go Vikings! And, um, Pastor Andrew and Camille, if you step down here, if the ushers could bring baskets, and if we could have one at the door. You guys, thank you so much. I want to see everybody out here on Wednesday night. Joe Bennett will be here. It's going to be a blessed, blessed night. But come say your goodbyes to the Masons. We love them dearly. God bless everybody. Thank you for being here today.